Kill. Kill and I is a killer. is your only friend. So, Marcus Conte reporting, reporting uh, about the, a little more on the QAnon killer, right? QAnon killer, breaking uh, uh, story today. Not a breaking story, but a breaking story uh, for the New York Times. Does, does belief in QAnon make you insane? <laughs> now, I've been saying this all along. This is relate in relation to the Anthony Camillo uh, a uh, guy who shot the Gambino crime boss. So it's a breaking article. Let's look at the article from uh, Allie Watkin. Allie Watkin of the New York Times has uh, uh, put out her piece this morning. I was schmoozing with Allie Watkin. I met her at the uh, at the uh, court yesterday, and um, she here, here it is. Here's her headline: Does belief in QAnon make you legally insane? Mob hit trial may tell. Now, who? Uh, sorry, I know Allie's Allie's probably watching this because. I just asked Allie if she wants to be to uh, to come on my show and let's do an interview. We'll go. We'll go. Um, we'll talk about this stuff because I believe all this. So I'm going to read uh, read through Allie's uh, fine um, uh, article and then we'll talk about it. So uh, Allie, come on the show. I just sent you an email. <laughs> Check your box. Does belief in QAnon make you legally insane? Mob hit trial may tell. Uh, so Anthony Camillo, accused of killing a Gambino crime boss, is obsessed with conspiracy theories. And there he is. We've seen the picture. It's QAnon. I was the first one to say it. I was the first one to say it. Everybody was saying, oh, it's a mob hit. It's a mob hit. I said, no, it's a fucking Q. He's got a fucking Q on his hand. Check his fucking hands, Q. I said that. Conti said that. Roll the tape back. Nobody said Q before I said Q, right? People were saying, it's not a fucking Q. It's a Q. It's a, it's a zero. No, it's a fucking Q. So, so anyway, so, so, and I also said he threw the gun in the water. So I, I've been right on all this shit, man. You guys should fucking New York Times. You should be listening to me. Uh, so, um, so that's Allie right there, Allie, Allie Watkins. She put this out at five uh, five a.m. this morning. Four days after pulling off the most high-profile mob killing in decades, Anthony Camillo sat down in New York with a New York Police Department detective and told them that the CIA had infiltrated the mafia. And he added the government was spying on him. He did say that, yeah. Uh, I'm going to fact check the New York Times. Sorry. Sorry, guys. He had put his phone in a copper bag to protect it from satellites, he told them. The, Democrat, the Democratic operatives in Washington were doing business with El Capo, the drug kingpin. He said all that. I saw the interview. In the nine months since the conversation, Mr. Camillo, 25 has claimed, uh, claimed to his lawyer that he killed Frankie Cali because the mob boss was part of the, quote, deep state, a member of a, lib- a liberal cabal working to undermine President Trump. That's pretty accurate. That's a pretty accurate description of what Q is. I agree with that. At one court appearance, Camille scrawled on his hand a symbol and phrase associated with the far-right conspiracy QAnon. He also said MAGA forever, patriots in charge, um, yeah, and other stuff. So now Mr. Camille's paranoia is, is being litigated in the Staten Island court where he is charged with the murder of Frankie Kelly. His lawyer has taken the first steps in a legal battle that hinges on the question uh, made for the Internet age. At what point does the belief in a far-right conspiracy theory make you legally insane? Ah, right? So because... That's why this case is so so important. If this judge, 
Judge uh, Garnett, decides that there is an insanity plea here, uh, a, a legitimate, a, le- a legitimate, you know, the guy's insane. Why? Because he was down a, a right-wing rabbit hole, QAnon. Right? Now, I would just, I would just beg to differ. At what point does belief in any conspiracy theory make you legally insane? That's really the question. How the crime's three major components, an aimless drifter from Staten Island, the underboss of the Gambino crime family, and a far-right internet conspiracy theory collide on a dark street in Toad Hill has perplexed law enforcement officials and mob watchers alike. Now, I told you, I did extensive backgrounds. I, I come from Staten Island. I, I grew up in Staten Island. I still know, you know, 10, you know, kids that grew up in the mob, grew up with mob-related families. And I poked around, and nobody said shit about this was a mob hit. When the mob makes a hit, they pronounce it. They come out and say, oh, we've whacked the guy, right? And because it's a power vacuum. It's a power struggle, right? And in comes the, the, uh, the insurgents of the people that killed the, the boss. Nothing like that at all. Not a peep, nada, nothing was said. It must have been the, the, the most secret mob hit in history, right? That's why you got to kind of... Uh, it's sort of rule it out. So conspiracy theories and disinformation campaigns have been something of a renaissance with the rise of social media, in turn becoming embedded in modern political discourse. Yeah. But while millions have read unsupported theories uh, propounded in dark corners of the Internet, some have been uh, prompted to act violently. Yeah. In December 2016, uh, Edgar Madison Welch, 31, traveled from North, Carol- uh, North Carolina to Washington, C- D.C., and became, began shooting inside of a family pizzeria restaurant after reading an Internet conspiracy theory that claimed Democratic candidates were running a pri- uh, child prostitution ring in the basement. That's Pizzagate. Uh, in, in October 2018, Caesar Sayoc Jr. mailed a series of pipe bombs to prominent Democrats and others by... Be- by his belief, uh, and, and others, he believed were members of the deep state. Now, I would take, I would take uh, difference in there. I would beg to differ that Caesar Sayoc was a patsy uh, because there was no evidence leading up to his confession that any of that happened. In fact, I went and, and uh, took the steps of what he may have done at CNN where they say that the package was delivered to CNN, and it's just physically impossible to have done that with the fact that you have to go through a, mess- a series of messengers, messaging uh, 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 offices for that to have happened. So there's so many holes in the Caesar Sayoc uh, story, uh, which could have been a patsy in the timing of it right before, uh, before the 2018 election was very suspicious. But certainly the Pizzagate guy, I, would, I agree with that. Uh, Mr. Welsh and Mrs. Sayoc eventually pleaded guilty and apologized for their actions and were sentenced to federal prison. Neither used an insanity defense, but legal experts say their crimes showed how conspiracy theories can influence people. Yes! Yes! Yes, they do! You look, we're seeing it all over the place, right? How, how these trolls get on, on top of your back and they cause, you know, all kinds of shit. Look, look at uh, poor Isaac Cappy, jumped off a bridge, right? This shit is crazy. When they perpetuate conspiracy theories online, it's combustible, said Alan Rose, the founder of Cult Education Institute, who has studied far-right conspiracies. That fuel ignites when someone who's disturbed finds the substance of their conspiracy theories. Yeah. But again, this is the New York Times. Sorry, Allie, but it's not only right wing. It's, 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 it's not right or left. It's It's... It's oligarchy money versus, you know, vulnerable people. Still, most of the people who believe in conspiracy theories are uh, perfectly sane and never comment, uh, never commit a crime, experts on insanity defense say. Even people with these conspiracy theories certainly act out on them very rarely. All right. Mr. Camillo, 25, stands accused of carrying out one of the city's most brazen and apparently unsanctioned mob killings in history. Prosecutors say he shot and killed Mr. Cali outside of his Staten Island home in March. Mr. Cali, 53, was, a, was reputed to be the underboss of the Gambino crime family. 
it's not the mob. It's not the prosecutors saying it. He said it. I saw the interview. I saw him that is now admitted, admitted into evidence, the confessional video. Camillo said he killed him. Right? You hear him say it. The cop says, did you shoot him? Then you shot him. He said, yeah. How many shots? I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, so it's Camillo saying he shot the guy. It's confirmed. Mr. Camillo's lawyer, uh, Gottlieb, has maintained that his client was deeply deluded by conspiracy theories. He went uh, to Mr. Cali's home to arrest him and turn him over to the military. Then he shot him when he resisted being taken into custody, Gottlieb said. Now, one other thing I want to diffuse is this idea that Camillo was in a relationship with, with Callie's niece, Rose, Rosemary. Right? That is, is factually incorrect. The um, detective said it on the stand that that was bad information. They had bad information. And, and when confronted with that idea, you see Camillo in his own words. I don't know. Who the fuck, who fuck is Rosemary? I don't know no Rosemary. I don't know no mafias. He said it in his own words. He doesn't, is he lying? Well, he could be. But the fact is that the, the detective on the stand said that, that there was no connection to any niece, that they had bad information. Right? I believe I heard that correctly. So that's off the table. He ardently believed that Callie, a boss in the Gambino crime family, was a prominent member of the deep state and accordingly an appropriate target for a citizen's arrest. Uh, he also tried to arrest uh, Mayor de Blasio, Adam Schiff, and uh, Maxine Waters. At the time, Mr. Gottlieb said, those delusions were evidence that Mr. Camillo was unfit to stand trial and instead should be given psychiatric treatment. The judge has since imposed a gag order on Mr. Gottlieb uh, and has, uh, has declined to comment. <clears throat> I, I interviewed, I caught uh, Mr. Gottlieb outside the courthouse before the gag order twice. So if you want to go through my playlist, you'll find me uh, uh, talking to Gottlieb. In New York, the uh, legal bar for an insanity defense is high. Defendants must show that not only uh, that they have a mental illness, but that the illness prevented them from understanding the consequences of their actions or from knowing they were morally wrong. Prosecutors have, prosecuted, have proceeded in court as if Camillo is mentally competent and can be held responsible for his actions. At a hearing in October, the lead prosecutor, Wada Di Alaviala, <laughs> Wada, Wada de la, I can't fucking tell, long Italian name, said Mr. Camillo's mind was clear, crystal clear when he wavered his right to a lawyer during his interview with detectives. I would agree with that. I saw the interview. He wasn't no delu delusional, druggy, crazy. He knew what, where, he, where he was, what he did, what was being asked him. That was my, that's my humble opinion, sitting in the pew watching the video. Using mental illness as a defense in such a case is not without precedence. Mr. Perlin said, also, um, almost all of the early insanity defense cases were political in nature, he said, going back to the attempted assassination of King George III in the 1800s. You've got a real, real tradition of insanity defense cases of very, very seriously mentally ill people who commit their crimes out of some sort of utterly bizarre political motivation. Utterly bizarre political motivation. Q, I love you, Q. Fucking A, man. Conti was right again. Conti is in cahoots with the New York Times. You could start that rumor. How Mr. C the the left leaning Q, the left leaning Times. How how Mr. Camillo came to asso associate Mr. C with Mr. Cali with far right conspiracy political s theories which typically target Democratic politicians, not mafia bosses, remains unclear. Uh, I, I don't think so. I think it's very clear. It's clear that QAnon is, you know, is... The, the idea is, the, the mystery is this. Was the QAnon board, who is, first of all, who's financing the QAnon board? But it's not necessarily the QAnon board itself. It's the troll farms and the, the uh, incubator the the psych the psychiat the psychotic incubators that surround the QAnon phenomena, the, these um, these 
uh, what I interviewed, um, what's her name, Denise Matow, uh, uh, on death cults, that they're actual death cults where they troll you and, 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 uh, and instigate fights with you, trying to draw you into their nonsense, right? And then they, and, and in, that, in that troll draw, they recruit crazy fucks that will go out and shoot a Gambino guy. Now, who finances those things? That's who you want to look, look at. Follow the money. If it is a, consp- if it is a political, politically motivated, who is funding the troll farms and the, uh, the attack groups, these, these um, uh, you know, cults? That's what they are. They're gang-stalking cults. That who's funding them? And then you find out who killed Frankie Kelly. <laughs> so... Um, on an Instagram page associated with him and identified in court filings, Mr. Camillo posted memes with the symbols associated with QAnon. Yeah, there was some of them, not a lot. A lot of it is still on Camillo's computers that uh, the lawyer claims to have thousands of inputs. We need to see that. That's what, that's what this reporter is waiting for. The theory uh, pro- pro- promulgated by an anonymous poster known as Q claims that a legion of undercover agents exists within the government fighting against an entrenched bureaucracy that is secretly plotting against the Trump administration and its supporters. It's not really secretive. It's the fucking CIA. Of course that's what they do. They, the FBI and the CIA has, has, is documented to have tried to overthrow Trump. The, 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 the Steele dossier, the, 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 you know, the PP dossier, where they tried to frame the president of the United States. As a Russian spy, it's not, it's not conspiracy anymore. It's actual fact. Or the or Russia, you want to talk about conspiracy, what about Russiagate? Fucking where, where the, the United States government is supporting Hillary Clinton to create a, a Russian narrative that has no basis whatsoever in fact or law. So I would disagree that, uh, that it's some sort of theory at, at this point. It is not a theory. It is factual, but does it lead to murder? That's what we want to find out. Mr. Ross said people like Camillo, who his family said had been behaving erratically for some time before the killing, can easily be drawn into this kind of networking that is being done online. Yes, he, has already, he was already sick. He was a train wreck waiting to happen, Mr. Ross said. But who sent the train down the rails to wreck him? It was QAnon. Oh, 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 man. Mr. Camillo appeared to believe uh, he is mentally sound. On Wednesday, he refused to take a psychiatric examination administered by a doctor from the prosecutor's office. Judge uh, Garner warned his refusal could jeopardize his right to use an insanity defense. That's what I was trying to say on the courthouse steps yesterday. Remember when I was babbling? Here I was. There's the lawyer. There, he's come, the lawyer's coming out. There's the, the New York Times photographer. There's a, a family member, I think. I, I'll leave his name out of it. I don't know who he is. Right? But there we were. There's New York Times. Allie's inside doing the report. And I tried to ask him, you know, for, for I because I know there's a gag order, but I said, hey, can we, can we ask you some questions? And he said no. Uh, so anyway, but but the, the point where I digress. So... Um, so when the judge told him uh, that you jeopardize your insanity plea if you don't speak to the psychiatrists, Camillo blurted out, perfectly fine with that. Now, I didn't hear him say that, but I heard him babble something. He mumbles a lot. And he's scribbling and he mumbles and he twi- he's a little bit twitchy. So, so he said that and then the judge said, well, your, ju- your lawyer can advise you on the consequences of that action. So, accurate. I, 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 I hope that's accurate. I, don't, I, didn't hear what, I didn't hear him say perfectly fine with that, but he said something. Over the last nine months, Mr. Camillo has at times seemed engaged and focused during court hearings, but at other times he has uh, appeared distant, uh, staring blank, blankly, whispering erratically, and speaking out of turn. Yes, 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 that all observed. Scruffy. Hair out of whack, not like the uh, you know the, like the nice uh, Italian boy with the shaven head. He's fucking that last time he was like that, but this time he was scruffy. Mr. Gottlieb has argued that Mr. Camillo's initial confession 
uh, should be kept out of court. No, incorrect. Miranda writes, on Thursday, Judge Garnett denied that motion. All evidence uh, that was revealed in the hearing last month sticks. According to court documents, Ms. Miller gave detectives several different explanations for why he killed Mr. Callie. At first, he said he had been smoking marijuana in front of the Callie's home before the shooting, and he, and he did not know Callie was a reputed mob boss until the next morning. He then claimed the family of John Gotti had asked him to kill Callie and then threatened to blackmail him if he did, if he did not. Now, I don't know that to be true, that the family of John Gotti had asked him to kill Callie. I don't know where you're getting that from, but I didn't hear that shit in the court. <laughs> he did say that someone, he said in the deposition that I heard, he said, they asked me to take care of this. Now, it, there is, I don't know that to be true. So we could argue about that. Finally, Mr. Cali, uh, finally, Mr. Camillo told detectives he had gone to Mr. Callie's home to warn him that the Gotti family wanted to kill him. He remain, that, it remains unclear why Callie wound up dead in this version of Mr. Camillo's story, which a detective said in court that he didn't believe. Right? Why would you kill the guy if you're going there to warn him about being killed? It doesn't make sense. So... Um, so that's the whole article. I read it all. All right. So Marcus Conti reporting. Anyway, so it's a, thank you very much, Ali Watkin, uh, Watkin, Watkins, for uh, putting that out there. It's good stuff, man. It's really good stuff. I got a lot of other stuff too, man. I got a little more depth of what what was said. I think that the the interview, the where he where Camillo is sitting in front of that detective. The detective did a great job. He communicated with him. He he won over his trust. And Camillo spilled his guts. Yes, he did change his story three times. Nobody has seen, nobody in the public has seen the full three hours of the, of the video. I, they only played clips of it. They played maybe 45 minutes of it. But a powerful 45 minutes where he throws up and he's, he's scared and he's rambling and he's talking. And he, he talks about his AIDS. He talks about his mental condition. He talks about, you know, Fox News. <laughs> So there's a lot more in that deposition. There's certainly a, a lot more uh, to be revealed in, in Camillo's computer entries. Where was he? What boards was he talking to? What troll farms, what gang stalkers approached him? Because when we find that out, I got, I got folder upon folder. I got lots of files on all these guys. And so when, when that shit happens, when he... when when names fly in open court, when names, when conspiracy theory names, the names that we know fly in open court, that's when this shit is going to get real. So you guys better watch your ass. Better watch your ass. Uh, Marcus Conti reporting, kindly become a Patreon of this channel. Uh, you know, YouTube demonetizing. This is, you know, everybody else is getting paid to, to tell their stories. I get fucking nothing, man. You guys are like... I got my, I'm drinking bottled, like I'm drinking fucking tap water now. I don't even have money for Perrier. Become a Patreon or one-time contribution at uh, PayPal. And uh, buy some stickers on eBay. I got stickers for sale. If you want to see this, if you want me to still be here telling the story, you know, uh, contribute. So, uh, Marcus Conti reporting. Thank you, uh, Ali Watkin. Um, invitation is open. Come on the show. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's uh, let the doors take us out. I got the doors on warp speed, by the way, because because of the copyright stuff. Yeah, baby. Yeah. When the music's over. When the music's over